Oh, hey dudes, are you uh, heading off to class? Well, before you get back to school, make sure to watch this video because you will thank me later. I'm gonna show you how to apply art and creativity to every single subject in school, even if it isn't arty or creative. And if you face a couple of tussles with bullies in school like I did from time to time, I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can whip out to show a tremendous feat of great strength so they never harass you again. Just look them in the eyes and just go. <laughs> G'day fellow kids, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today we're going to talk about how you can further your art career in school in the classes that aren't art. Now, of course, I do need to begin with the disclaimers that this only should be applied when you've done your appropriate work, when you're getting good grades, but sometimes at the end of your assignments or whatever, there's a bit of time to sit around twiddle your thumbs and wait for an old teacher to come along and correct your work. Well, that's where this video comes in, fellow youths. I'm going to show you all of the tips and tricks that I acquired over many years of creating art while getting good grades and paying attention in class. While we're opening up with disclaimers and stuff, I should of course add the disclaimer that vandalizing property or books and wasting stationery and school supplies is not cool, kids. So if you have textbooks that you have to resell later or if they're not your property, make sure to not ruin them or disrespect other people's property. But if it's your own and uh, if it's not going anywhere later, well, just have some fun, I guess. <laughs> I'm not your dad, I'm just a fellow youth. <laughs> so let's start off with a bit of a supplies list. I've got a couple of textbooks here. It doesn't matter what subject, it could be maths, it could be cooking. Then we just have your basic notebook. You're gonna have a lot of these in school. As far as drawing materials go, this is a, a fairly average school pencil case. Got some highlighters, your basic biros and gel pens. And then we have a felt tip pen, some whiteout, and then we just have a mechanical pencil and some lead and textus. So let's go through some of the basics. Our workbook sketching tips. Again, pretty sock standard stuff. This is where you you're gonna have your assignments written down. The assignment is uh, to do an ass, 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 I can't spell. I should have paid more attention in school. The trick is to not draw amongst your assignment, just flip to the back and use the last pages and work backwards in your workbook and this can these can be your dedicated sketching pages. Using a blue biro pen is a great way to just draw your basic construction sketches. Obviously there's no erasing, but I rarely erase construction sketches anyway. I actually tend to think some of the rough sketchy stuff looks the coolest anyway. And look at this, oh, what am I drawing? Oh, that's a surprise, it's a Jazza avatar. I've never drawn those before, it's, it's original. This is where the felt tip comes in because drawing with a black biro on top of that is not gonna really, really stand out much. So you could use a felt tip pen or a Sharpie. We're gonna have lines that stand out a lot more on your sketches. And actually they can turn out to look pretty cool. Then of course, just flip back to your sketch work. Oh, what was, I was just, uh, oh, there's, there's, there's me bloody assignment. You can just correct that. Oh, there's a big tick. You did a great job, Jazza. Thank you. There you go. See? And it's like I'd never even sketched. That's all pretty standard stuff. I just thought I'd uh, duck through that though, because it's worth just covering the bare basic minimums. But let's move on to textbooks. And this is actually where you get to stretch your creativity a bit. So there are two spectrums of art skill development that you can actually develop through using textbooks. The first is character and costume design, and the second is animation. So the character design aspect comes into play when you change the character, and you can do this in fairly extreme ways. Now let me start off by showing Showing you how not to do it, how many assume you do it. You don't do it like this. Oh, look at this! I've got a angry eyes and a and an eye patch and 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 a mustache. Oh no! Oh, it's so silly! Look at that! <laughs> What a noob. We are professional artists. We use every tool at our disposal and we take our time and make something really worth looking at. There are two tools aside from the uh, biro that we've used here that are really useful. The first are highlighters and then we have whiteout or liquid paper, which is great because we can actually erase sections of the image and build our own interpretations or additions on there from scratch from a blank white area. So let's pick a theme with this dude. Let's go uh, cyber punk maybe. You don't just leave it and start scribbling over your sketch like a basic barbarian. You go in with your pencil and you very lightly put in your foundation. 
position and lay down some ideas so you can develop them. So with this dude, for example, for going cyberpunk, let's give him a mohawk, a nice squared off thing. And uh, he's got lots of floofy hair on the side, but I'm actually gonna turn this into a helmet. And his clothes are all really thick and bunched up. So we can add to this, let's give him some shoulder pads. We can add some tubes going into the shoulders. And now that we've got a rough sketch in, we can go in with our refined art supplies and add a touch of color and some really refined edges and tweaks to really make this character design all right. And here you can see with just a little extra effort and time, the result is something that looks spectacular. And now uh, figure 3.9 Franz Goll from 1758 to 1828 can be renamed Captain Franz Galacticus <laughs> from uh, 2758 to 2828. Perfect. There are two things that are gonna help you get away with this on a regular basis. And the first is being good at your coursework. If you hand in your stuff on time and you do all your work and the teachers can't complain about all that stuff, they're gonna have less ground to stand on when they come across this. And the second is, if you do a really, really good job on your artwork, they're gonna to struggle to tell you off because they'll be too damn impressed when they're looking through your textbook. All right, now we talked about character design and costume design. We've sort of touched on that, but this was also sort of black and white. But you can also apply the things that I talked about to colored images, for example. So we can turn this horrific goblin into a pretty lady, for example. We can use the blush trick, which is just to put down some pink on the cheeks and then wipe it off straight away. That's just gonna give us a little bit of a subtle blush. Let's go in with the white out and sculpt a lovely hairdo. We can totally white out this big suit and put on a really nice sort of winter dress with long sleeves. Now with our foundation of white out down, we can go in with our highlighters and textures and add our color. Now I would recommend to add color before you go in with lines because the, uh, the markers will smear your line work. And always make sure you allow for time to dry because this will take longer to dry than you expect. While we're waiting for some areas to dry, we can go in and add details to our other areas. For example, we can give some nice luscious lips, add some definition to the, uh, the chins. Now that things have dried enough, we can go in and add some definition to the areas that we've drawn down. And just like that, what was once a hideous toad is now a pretty, pretty lady with lovely dainty hands. <laughs> I love that this is actually the page on personality disorders. Narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, paranoid personality disorder, and it has a picture of the President of the United States. Welcome to the Australian schooling system. We don't f*** around. So there we go, we've gone through costume design, character design in our textbooks. Now let's touch on animation, and I'm sure watching this are some budding future professional animators. Well, guess what? You can practice your frame-by-frame -frame animation skills in your school textbooks. I'm sure plenty of you have tried this in your notebooks and that's fine and all, but they usually aren't as many pages. They don't flip as easily because they're not as even to hold and sort of squeeze and pinch. But then the other thing is there's no visual cue as to the position of where and what your animating is and should be. So that's why textbooks are really useful because in the bottom right corner, you usually have things like numbers and the books are really cleanly cut so actually flipping the pages is nearly always super neat. Now it's important to always start at the back of the book and animate chronologically forward in time as you move page by page towards the front of the book. You're going to start to use the method of the old men of Disney, the great masters, and that is rocking the paper back and forth. Let's have a stick figure falling down from the sky like this and now just rocking back and forth. It's actually helpful because we can see the page behind so we can use that as a bit of an onion skin. And just like that, we can see our little stick figure moving and you can see that uh, we're actually able to make some pretty quick progress, especially once you get the hang of it. This dude is moving very quickly. So while there's quite a bit of distance between the frames, it's important to remember that this is gonna be moving at like 30 to 50 frames per second, depending on how fast you flip through the book. So you're not gonna want 
to have too much motion or movement between the pages. So for example here, when he touches down, we're gonna want to have a bit of a lingering pose, like a superhero landing. So we're not gonna wanna move much from this position because a common mistake that people make when they're animating in their textbooks is that they're constantly moving. There's no give and take. There's no uh, slow in, ease out. There's just always something different on the next frame. Whereas sometimes it's important to just make sure that things move slowly and then things move fast. You wanna practice your dynamic animation technique. So now I'm going to go forwards and keep animating him. I'm going to animate him jumping up and kicking in midair and landing again. And then I'm going to go back and have a stick figure coming in to be hit. So we animate one stick at a time. And if there's ever a point of contact, do the point of contact first so that we know that they're in the right position at the right time. And then we can animate backwards or forwards as we need. All right, so it's time to have a look at what I've done. We have a stick figure falling, landing, then another dude has come along. Oh, what's happening? Big slam kick, look at that! Now the victim of the kick falls away and lands on the page over here, bounces, and there he is, and then he sort of disappears. And our badass dude, after kicking, does a flip, lands, chills out for a bit, does a backflip, and jumps off the page. The best way to do this so it shows off smoothly and it's easier to show a smooth animation is to have less motion between each page and double the length so that you can just flick through a lot faster and it just plays forward at a more reasonable speed. But this gives you the general idea as to how to do this. Now let's move on to sculpture. And there are two ways of sculpting while in class. The first is with our trusty erasers and the second is with blue tack. Let's start off with our erasers. Now this can be done with scissors if that's all you have access to, but it's difficult. But if there is a class you have where they have hobby knives and you're able to use them, then that's the easiest way to accurately and smoothly get nice cuts from your erasers. One of the things I used to like doing, which is a little morbid, is uh, cut the eraser like this. I cut a little coffin shape. You know where this is going, don't you? And with our coffin shape, and as carefully and accurately as possible, we can thinly cut off the top of the eraser like this. Oh no, I ruined it! Thinly cut a layer off the top. You want it to be e as even as possible. There you go, look at that, that's our lid. Now you're gonna to wanna to create a bit of a border, but you don't wanna cut all the way to the other side. We're digging in and leaving a little bit of a gap at the bottom, so it requires a little bit of finesse, a little bit of accuracy. See, we're practicing our fine motor skills. Now, as you can see, we've got a bit of a lip around this central mass. So we're gonna carefully go inside here and just on one side, just cut in, not all the way through, but just enough to separate that middle section. There we go, look at this. Ah, <gasps> oh, perfect. Look at that, we got our little coffin with our lid. Now we got this little block here. Now just grab your pencil and sketch a little, little vampire figure. Now we can just carve the edges outside of our silhouette. Look what you have! Little sculpture of a little vampire! Put the lid on his coffin and then you can take it off and go, ah, you have woken me from my slumber. Ah, 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 ah. So that's one method of sculpture. The other, as I mentioned, is blue tack. And I have done a dedicated video about this on my channel, so I'll link to that in the card. The great thing about blue tack is you can just keep a lump of it in your pencil case and then whenever you feel like sculpting, you can just pull it out, give it a bit of a knead, get ready to go, and get sculpting. What can you sculpt with blue tack? Well, here's a little something that the, the other kids at school are gonna love. Check this out, you ready? You just make a little, make a little blue tack worm. Taper it at one end, and just like a soft serve, we're gonna wrap this around. There we go, look at this. We wrap it around itself a few times. And for sculpting, we can use our scissors. Push this down, and we're gonna roll the leftover blue tack into two little balls, just like this. Get another little bit of blue tack, shape this into a bit of a semi-circle. Pop it on the front there, and using our mechanical pencil, we can hide the lead and just use the metal point to put in two little eye holes and the inside of a mouth. And look at that, it's a poop emoji. Kids love poop emojis. Now these are just a few little examples, but really you could get quite ambitious. And again, these things are very portable and easy to access when you're at school. And if you have the spare erasers and blue tack, the, the world, the sky's the limit and you can express yourself and make cool stuff. But as with everything else I've shown you and we've discussed, the way to do it and get away with it, if you get caught, is to make it so impressive that they actually can't help but just not complain and be impressed. The last thing I want to go through with you guys is actually something that I didn't know how to do during high school, and I wish I did, because I would have shown those bullies who not to mess with. 
I'm going to show you how to fake a feat of great strength to terrify those around you into not messing with you. I am finally going to show you how to tear a book in half. This is a great party trick that I've never had a chance to share with people and I'm using this video as an excuse to do it because it makes me feel really tough and cool. Let's just demonstrate this for you. There you go. Now the great thing about that is people assume it's impossible or requires a lot of strength. So all you need to really worry about is how to hold the book. The top cover you want to be really flat and the bottom you want to be really bendy and you want to fan all the pages out in the middle to be between that. So you start off by bending the book in and then you pull up like this while pinching the bottom so that you can see that we've spread all of these pages out and then really if you can do that effectively enough all you need to do is tear the front cover and then you're basically tearing one page at a time and you can rip a phone book in half. This is a real waste of phone books. You probably can't do this a lot. So that brings us to the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen. I have shown you how to make art. When people don't know you're making art, practice your creativity. When people assume you can't or shouldn't practice your creativity. And all the while, keeping those bullies at bay after having shown them a feat of incredible strength that they could never reproduce. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe for more fun with art and idiocy and creativity on Draw With Jazza. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell eBooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.